Okay, guys, we're back out here. It's Sunday around noon, give or take. Um, quick brief thing saying what you saw in the last couple of videos. I didn't have time to explain them. We'll explain what we're going to do today. One, um, I took the suspension parts to work. I cleaned the box with just a wire brush, you know, the handheld brush. Uh, that's ready to go. Um, I split the center link and all the gizmos off the pitman arm, which I left on the box. So that's its own little entity. The center link and the inner tie rod ends I'm saving. The collars and the outer tie rod ends I'm not saving. There's nothing wrong with the inner or outer tie rod ends. They're tight. The outer tie rod ends, the boots are cracked. So I figured change them now. The sleeves with the little clamps were $3.50 each, each assembly. So for $7, it'll just look nicer. When we assemble it, we're gonna paint up to that area on both sides. So when I do the final alignment, I can clamp it down and just go in there with satin black with a brush and call it good. Um, I did the strut rods. That's what goes from the low control arm to the back. Okay, to make a triangle. Okay, the strut rods are clean, all the bolts are clean. The brackets are just quickly brushed off. I was originally going to save the bushings um, so I'm not a fan of the urethane bushings for that one bushing was mint one the cup was cutting into it so I go to the urethane bushings so uh, there's a lot of stuff coming this week but I don't have it yet <laughs> so that's everything there um, that took a couple hours I did that at work nice and nice to leave the mess there um, the lower control arm still have to be clean. Low control arm ball joints are not being changed. They're tight. And if you haven't been able to tell yet, most of this newer crap is all made in China and it doesn't last as long. So I'm not going to take out a mint part and put in a Chinese part just to say I put a new part in. Especially the lower ball joints on this car have no load on them. All the loads in the upper ball joints, like a Mustang, they're the ones that fail. The upper ball joints, okay, they're not popping. But they're loose so they're definitely getting changed they've been ordered uh springs have been ordered i can tell you exactly what's been ordered lower control arms bushings have been ordered upper ball joints have been ordered springs have been ordered we're going with urethane bushings here for the spring purchase urethane bushings here for the uh strut rod mount um that's all been ordered new rotors have been ordered for the front new rotors have been ordered for the back Two brake lines have been ordered for the front. Uh, we're leaving these shocks. We have these shocks for the back. Those are 50-50s. Um, what else has been ordered? I think more than that has been ordered. I just can't think of it. Uh, master cylinder has been ordered. Master cylinder is for a, a 76 and under disc brake car. So it should be the one that's in my wagon brake lines come out on the opposite side to what would have been on this car no biggie uh, it's for manual brakes um, I bought a fan I bought a 7 blade original AMX fan that you won't see for a couple of weeks that the guy already took a check uh, a mail uh, money order I had a money order it to California so by the time that thing gets there and that thing gets back, that'll be weeks. We didn't pick up a radiator yet because I'm undecided. Haven't thought about it. Uh, I think that's it, even though I think the list is longer than that for some reason. Um, but okay, quickly, the, the engine you saw yesterday was a 585 cubic inch, all aluminum Brodix, block and heads, obviously big block Chevy based on a 454 not a 540 block it is a difference uh, it's obviously a smaller block smaller deck height uh, the class that the guy runs in the biggest you can go is 588 so he stays at 585 that's the biggest they can get out of that block and in order to do that the block has Siamese bores so that means the cylinders are touching each other it's obviously aluminum uh, the line is actually, instead of being a circle, a ground flat on one side to meet each other. Uh, the cam was raised 
400,000, so almost a half an inch up higher, so they could put the bigger stroke into it. Um, you were looking at $30,000 worth of parts sitting there scattered that we just unloaded out of the back of that truck. Okay, that was literally $30,000 worth of stuff. The heads were over 11 grand. Okay, um, majority of the stuff was brand new. The ignition and all the other components we used off his last engine. So the carburetor, the ignition, the distributor, some of the odds and ends we used. Uh, the block, the pistons, the rods, the crankshaft, the heads, that's all brand new stuff. So um, the person that's building it is my friend's father or the guy who owns the engine's uncle. Okay, he's retired, but he was one of the top builders for some of the race car engines that were rolling out of here on the island one of the assemblers so I won't say the name of the place that he worked for but just think mountain motor so the engines in good hands um, and hopefully we'll see more of that I'd love to leave Junior over there for a week during the assembly but I don't think that's gonna happen